Like many people who have a chronic illness journey, my symptoms when they first started were a very long span from when I was actually diagnosed. So I started showing symptoms that were a little strange when I was a kid. I grew up in California in a beach town, so it was fairly warm. And my family decided we were gonna start going to the mountains to go skiing. And that was my first exposure really to the cold. And I would have a real reaction to the cold. And it just kind of became this family joke. Oh, well, you know, Chris is allergic. I'm doing air quotes here because I know this is a podcast. <laughs> because uh, I wasn't really allergic, but I showed all these strange symptoms in the cold and went on with my life. I shod horses and what that is, horses wear those metal horseshoes. Somebody had to cut those on, right? So it is a dirty, hard job. You're bent over all the time, holding up a thousand pounds, really not good for your back. And so I had heard from somebody, well, yoga was good for your back. Why don't you give it a try? So I started it as a way to basically maintain my career. So now I'm in my early 20s, I'm shoeing horses every day, and I started this yoga practice just by going to a public class, and I actually really liked it. So I kept doing the yoga, and then I started doing yoga at home every morning before I would warm up for work. After about 10 years of shoeing horses, the cold kind of caught up to me. I was shoeing horses on an island in the Pacific Northwest, so lots of rain, lots of wind, outdoor in the barns every day. And being that this is hard on my back, it was like, okay, I'm pushing 30, maybe it's time to get a career that's a little kinder to your body. So I gave that up and I went to graduate school and still doing the yoga. Now it's just going to class. I go to graduate school, I have a couple kids. My kids finally both start elementary school. And in reflecting, it's like, wow, I've done yoga for 20 years. This is clearly really important to me. I think I'll go to yoga teacher training. And at this time it was just for myself to really deepen my own practice. When I started yoga teacher training, I had finally gotten a diagnosis about a year after the birth of my second son of systemic lupus erythematosus, which is a systemic autoimmune disease that can attack any body system. So I knew that when going into yoga teacher training and I thought, okay, well, I've been living with it for a few years now, I can handle it. Except that during yoga teacher training, I got a new diagnosis of mixed connective tissue disease, which is a much more rare combination disease, which does include lupus, but also rheumatoid arthritis. It often cheers up. And so that rupus combination is what they call it. That's the one I have. For some people, it expresses as myositis and scleroderma. But when I got that diagnosis, it was like, wow, okay, I have done all these things. You know, I was an athlete as a teen. I've shot horses, very physically demanding job. How could I manage to do all that? And yet now that I have this diagnosis, you're telling me I have all this really amazing imaging. And how did I do this? So that cognitive dissonance really made me realize I had found the best sales management tool that I could have found. And it really inspired me to share yoga with other people. And so that's why I have pursued the yoga trainings that I have to really specialize in sharing yoga for arthritis and specifically yoga in the water for arthritis with other people.